Good morning, first grade. Today is Monday, May 11th, 2020. I hope you had an awesome Mother's Day. I am gonna put up an optional assignment for you to take a video of telling me how you celebrated Mother's Day. I would love to know. So you guys can do that if you'd like. You don't have to do it. We are gonna have a short video today just for a day of catch up. Okay, so we're gonna go over our fluency page. We're going to talk about a saint today and that's all we're going to do and we will pick back up with a big full day of learning on Wednesday. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first grade, we are starting a new unit and that unit is unit 12 and today we are going to be reading our fluency page, Golly is on the ball. And this week and in our fluency page, we are going to see lots of words with the all sound spelled A-L-L. -L. So look at the top of this page and there are seven words and we are going to read them together. First, I'm going to read them and you are going to repeat after me. Ball. Fall. Wall. All. Small. Mall. Basketball. Very good. This time, let's read them together. Ready? Begin. Ball. Fall. Wall. All. Small. Mall. Basketball. Remember that basketball is a compound word, which means it has two words that when you put together, they make a new word. What are the two words in basketball? Basket and ball. Okay, so let's read our title one more time. Golly is on the ball. And when you say the phrase on the ball, that can actually mean two things. It could mean that they are actually lying on a ball or kind of jumping on a ball. But it also can mean that someone is doing a really good job. So we're going to read today and we're going to see what way is Golly on the ball. Okay, so you can just listen to me. And then this week for homework, you will be reading this on your own to practice. Here we go. Golly is on the ball. Golly was resting in the grass. He stretched. He lay his face on the grass. He began to fall asleep. Then, whiz! Golly could see the super kid's basketball fly by. Golly jumped over the wall. He chased the ball and stopped it. Golly tried to pick up the ball with his teeth, but it was too big. Notice that the word whiz is a little bit different. Whiz is the sound a ball might make when it is flying very fast through the air. What was Golly doing in the story before the basketball flew by? It says it right in the first paragraph. He was lying down in the grass just about ready to go to sleep. And what did he do when he saw the ball? He jumped over that brick wall. He chased and stopped the ball and tried to grab it with his teeth. All the super kids ran up. Fritz said, golly, stopped the ball, but his teeth made small holes in it. Oh, well, said Lily. Golly can keep that ball. We'll go to the mall and get a new one. So what ended up happening when Golly tried to grab the ball with his mouth? He popped it. His sharp canines poked holes into the ball, deflating it. I'm going to go back to the first page and I want to give you an example of how to read it. And I'm going to give you two ways. And one way is how I don't want you to read it. And one way is how I do want you to read it. And I want you to tell me the difference. Okay, we're just going to look at this first paragraph. Okay, here's the first way. Golly was resting on the grass. He stretched. He lay his face on the grass. He began to fall asleep. 
How does that sound? Sounded a little fast. Okay, now I want you to listen again. Golly was resting on the grass. He stretched. He lay his face on the grass. He began to fall asleep. Does anybody notice the difference? What did I do that was different? I had a few more pauses. Where did I take a short pause or a short breath before I stopped reading? Listen one more time. Golly was resting on the grass. He stretched. He lay his face on the grass. He began to fall asleep. I pause at each period at the end of the sentence. When you see a period at the end of a sentence or a comma, you take a short pause, which means you stop, and then you start reading again. That helps the listener understand the story a little bit better, and it helps you, the reader, understand it a little better too. I also want you to listen to me read it this way and see if you can tell me what's wrong. Golly was resting on the grass. What was wrong with that way? I read it a little bit too slow. We talk about this sometimes in guided reading that you don't want to read too fast, but you don't want to read too slow. You want to read right in the middle or just right. Remember to read this fluency page every night for your homework. And you also are going to be working on those spelling words that are right on the back. And those spelling words actually have lots of those all words. All right. Okay, you guys, let's start religion with an Our Father today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, you guys, today we have a really neat saint. His name is Saint Isidore the Farmer. And what does that look like is with him in the picture? An angel. And we're going to hear about that when we read about him, okay? Isidore was born in Madrid, Spain in the 12th century. He was a farmer on the land of a certain wealthy nobleman. He never missed daily mass. The neighbors accused him to his employer of neglecting his work in order to hear mass. But Isidore replied, I know, sir, that I am your servant, but I have another master as well, to whom I owe service and obedience. Who was St. Isidore's other master besides his boss? The employer went to the farm one morning very early when he found out that Isidore did not begin his work until a later hour, he went toward him to scold him. But he was surprised to find two strangers, each with a team of white oxen, plowing, one on each side of Isidore. When he approached them, they disappeared. He said to Isidore, Tell me, who are these two men who were plowing with you just now. Isidore said, I have not seen any person. I ask no help from anyone but God each morning at the Holy Mass. The nobleman understood that the two men he had seen were angels sent by God to help his servant in return for his hearing Mass faithfully. Wow. So this story of this saint teaches us a really good lesson and the lesson is not that you don't have to do your work as long as you go to church or as long as you pray the lesson is that does anybody know it okay 
the lesson is that if we stay faithful to God, if we pray to Him, if we visit Him, if we go to church, if we do that first, if we make that the number one thing we have to do, He will give us all the help we need to get everything done that we also need to get done. Okay? So what that means is, let's say you have a really messy room, okay, and you want to say a prayer, and you think, oh, I really should clean my room, and you should, okay, but you also should pray to God. We're supposed to talk to him every day. So when you pray to God first, what often happens is our work gets a little bit easier. We can focus a little harder. We might be able to get it done a little faster. We're more happy to do it, whereas before we didn't want to do it. So sometimes when we give God our time and our prayers, He will do something greater for us. He will help us with all that we need to do that day. That's why we prayed the Our Father this morning. Okay, because the Our Father says, Give us this day our daily bread. So what that means is, God, give me what I need today. Every day we have a task. Okay, and St. Isidore knew that he needed to go to Mass and get his work done. And God honored him and rewarded him for being so faithful to him. And he sent two invisible angels to help him get his work done quickly. Wouldn't that be neat if after we prayed and we had to clean our room or do the dishes, if God sent invisible angels to help us get it done faster? Hey, you guys, that's it for the day. For your homework tonight, I want you to read your fluency page. Golly is on the ball. And some of you accidentally turned that homework packet in, so I'm going to put a picture of it up so that way you can print it or look at it. Um, it's in our first homework packet that had a shy puppy on the front. Okay, it's in that one. It says Unit 12, Week 1, and the spelling words are on the back. Okay, so work on that, and you can also do the optional video to tell me how you celebrated Mother's Day. I would love to know, and I will see you guys on Wednesday.